This year's Louisiana Derby was a tale of tactics. Epicenter came into the race with 64 Kentucky Derby points already in the bank. Meanwhile, Zozus had zero Kentucky Derby points. As you can see with Epicenter, in his five career starts, he either went straight to the lead and set the pace, or he battled head and head for the lead. He had never been rated behind horses. Now, Steve Asmussen, who's 0 for 23 in the Kentucky Derby, I guess he and Joel Rosario decided that they were going to try and rate. So for the first time in his career, you'll see Epicenter taken in hand early and taken behind the early leader. Whereas Zozos, in his two previous wins, he actually let the leader go. He tracked the, the leader from a, a length and a half and three and a half lengths off the early pace. Now in the Louisiana Derby, with his zero points and needing points, they took no prisoners and went straight to the lead with Zozos. The betters would send Epicenter off as the even money favored in the race. Whereas Zozos was bet to 5-2 to two from his 8-1 to one morning line. So Epicenter went off the even money favored. Zozos went off 5-2. to two, And every other horse in the race besides those two went off at 6-1 to one odds or more. Essentially, the gambler seeing it as a two-horse race between Epicenter and Zozos. With all that said, now we're going to watch the Louisiana Derby. That's Epicenter in post six under Joel Rosario. Zozus is in post position two. You're going to see Zozus go to the lead. Watch the hold Rosario takes on, on uh, Epicenter early to tuck him in. And they're off. And the Twinspires.com, Louisiana Derby. And Zozos broke sharp. Curly Tail, Epicenter, and there's Pioneer of Medina as they make their way toward the clubhouse turn. It's Zozos. So Zozos leads at the inside for Florent Giroux with Pioneer of Medina second and close up. Epicenter in third with Capone in fourth. Gold on the outside in fifth. Curly Tail is sixth as they round the clubhouse turn. Round on the roll in seventh. Long odds, Silent Power is second to last. And with James Graham, the Lecomte winner, Call Me Midnight, settles in last position. It's Zozos. So Zozos leads Pioneer of Medina by three quarters of length. They have six furlongs to run. Joel Rosario and Epicenter nicely settled toward the inside, running in third with this run to the half mile pole. Capona in fourth. Galt is fifth. It's a break of two more then to rattle and roll, followed toward the inside by Curly Tail. The trailers remain silent power and finally call me midnight. The opening quarter was 23.27 seconds, half mile 47. Point thirty five seconds. They have a half mile to run in the Louisiana Derby. And it's Zozo, so continues to lead at tracking Pioneer of Medina with Epicenter right there tucked in toward the rail. Capuna being asked to pick up now with three furlongs to go. Then to the inside is Galt. Rattle and roll is still some eight legs off these leaders as Zozos continues to just fend Pioneer of Medina, followed by Call Me Midnight, who's now getting on the extreme outside. Curly Tail and Silent Power is last. Zozos, Pioneer of Medina. And here's a sweeping epicenter who's building momentum. Three quarters, one minute, 11.69 seconds. Epicenter has taken the lead. From the inside, Zozos, then Pioneer of Medina, and Call Me Midnight. Coming past the 16th, it's Epicenter, who's kicked away now from Zozos. Pioneer Medina will be third best. Epicenter wins the Louisiana Derby. Zozos was second, Pioneer Medina third. Then All right, you see Epicenter winning there. Very visually impressive. The time was great. They went 154 and 15th. The track record had been 155 flat, so I believe they actually, uh, you know, shaved four fifths of a second off the track record. And you'll see Epicenter win with his ears pricked there. You see, he win with his ears up which is a, you know, it's a great sign. It's a sign that the horse is very, um, you, you know, just waiting on the cue for his rider and he's got more in the tank. So um, when you see a horse win with his ears up versus win with his ears pinned, uh, generally a better sign when they win with their ears up. This was a stylish performance by Epicenter every way you slice it. You see them now running by the finish line for the first time here. And this is where Rosario's trying to get Epicenter uh, to relax. He's trying to take him behind the leader. And basically, he wants to get tucked into this pocket behind the two. And Zozos 
almost like where Zozos is towing him. Uh, he wants to, like he's getting towed by Zozos. Just follow him along uh, in the pocket. He's going to draft behind these two horses. You know, everything went as well as it could possibly go for Epicenter here. As far as the pace in this race, the pace was solid, but it wasn't contested. So there's a difference between a fast pace and a fast and contested pace. I mean, this was a, an honest to fast pace, but it was not, th these horses weren't fighting early. They were all in their comfort zone, relaxing. It was really a clean, cleanly run race altogether. You see here, Zozos loose on the lead. If you bet Zozos, this is exactly what you want. I mean, he is getting no pressure. He's going pretty decent fractions, but he's a he's a fast horse. He's by Munnings, who is a really good sprinter, and he's out of a forestry mayor. Forestry was extremely good sprinter. Uh, he threw the green monkey, that $16 million horse. He also uh, sired Discreet Cat, who run a mile in 132. Uh, Zozus has a pedigree that's, you know, gr a very good speed pedigree, and he's loose here. Now, Pioneer of Medina is applying moderate pressure at this point, but, I mean, he, he's not he's not head-to-head -head with him. I mean, he's not looking him in the eye. He's, you know, relaxed off of him enough. And here you see Epicenter just getting that toe. He's drafting, he's drafting right behind the top two. He's just raiding beautifully. You see the way he's carrying his head there. Epicenter's just, he, he's just moving beautifully in the pocket there. I mean, it, it, at this point, if you bet Epicenter, you'd probably be real nervous because he's doing something he's never done before. But, you know, when you see him relax like that, that would take the nerves away. So both of these horses had... Zazus and Epicenter both had ideal clean trips. Epicenter was doing something he'd never done before. It was something you weren't sure that he would do. Now, he did a very nice job of it, but in the Kentucky Derby, it's going to be a little different rating. There's going to be horses all around him. Uh, there's going to be a, there's going to be more horses in the race with tactical speed. So he may be rating like this, but he may have horses perched to his inside and his outside. Here, he's just letting, you know, a horse making his stakes debut with only two starts under him, you know, go cruise along on a pretty lively pace, and he's just relaxing in behind it. Visually, this performance was a 10 out of 10 for Epicenter. I mean, it was outstanding visually. Uh, the, the number was great. The time was great. Um, he, the only thing was, it was a very clean trip. I mean, it was... He's not going to get a trip this clean in the Derby, or if he does, I mean, I would think it's a very uh, slim chance that he does. You know, that's the only uh, kind of uh, little knock I could have on this race is that, um, you, you know, he's th this is this is a very – if you're a horse that likes to be pocketed, this is a dream trip. I mean, you're drafting in the pocket behind two horses. You got no one coming up to pressure you. You got no worries that you're going to get stuck down there. And Rosario's not going to play around from this point. He's going to get him outside. And uh, Gaffleon on uh, Pioneer of Medina is actually moving here, which makes it easier. Um, so at, at this stage of the race, I mean, you can see that Epicenter is, you know, Everything that they wanted to have happens happening. I mean, he relaxed well, he raided well, uh, he didn't get rank, and you know, once he gets, once he gets out of that toe, I mean, he's like he's getting towed, and now he's out of that toe, he's into the clear, and he's just going to come swooping three wide, and he went by Zazus like he went by Zozos like Zozos was a Munnings to Forestry making his stakes debut. I mean, that's what it looked like visually. The way he got by Zozos, um, you know, was he, he got by him with disdainful ease here. Uh, drew off, you know, pricked his ears. It, it was as pretty as it can get. The only thing is, you know, in the Kentucky Derby with 20 horses, it's a little different, you know, rating in this type of race. 
than it will be with, uh, you know, a race where there's seven or eight horses with good speed. Now, the other horse we have to talk about in this race is third place finisher Pioneer of Medina. Uh, Tyler Gaffleone actually got dumped in the post parade. Uh, Pioneer of Medina, very greenish, immature colt, and, and he he dumped the rider in the post parade, and I saw him loose. Um, they, they did a nice job where he didn't, you know, he didn't uh, do enough where they had to scratch him. So, but anyway, Gaffleone did get dumped in the post parade in the Louisiana Derby. He he run third, beating about three and a half lengths or so, and. One thing that's real encouraging with Pioneer of Medina, he's by Pioneer of the Nile, who was American Pharaoh sire. Now, Pioneer of the Nile was second to mind that bird in the Kentucky Derby. He was an empire maker, empire maker, a Belmont Stakes winner. And Lights of Medina, who is the dam of Pioneer of, the, of, of Medina, she was 17 lengths back and, and just missed in the black-eyed Susan at nine and a half. So she, she was a huge stretch-running two-turn horse. Pioneer of the Nile, also a two-turn horse. You love the pedigree with Pioneer of Medina, and you like that he's just constantly improving. You look at his numbers, 45, 69, 80, 93. He's going forward, and he was the one that did the dirty work in the race. He, he um, you know, he went after the Brad Cox Zozo and put the pressure on. That's how... Uh, Epicenter was able to get out of the pocket there is, you know, he, he just relaxed as Pioneer of Medina and Gaff Leone turned up the pressure on Zozo. So Pioneer of the Nile, he run hard the whole way. He's a horse that a mile and a quarter is going to be right up his alley. He's got to step it up, though. Honestly, I would I would take Pioneer of Medina over Zozo's in the Kentucky Derby, no doubt about it, because with, with this horse, you got a mile and a quarter pedigree. You got an improving horse, and the immaturity that he showed me in the post parade, dumping the rider, and I mean, you know, this could be the kind of horse that's, um, you know, the light bulb maybe hasn't fully gone off yet. I don't know about that. Uh, maybe Todd Pletcher would be a lot better to ask than me, but, you know, when you see an improving three-year-old colt who's green like that, sometimes, you know, they just... Uh, eventually they put it all together and when they do it's a pretty thing to see so that's the louisiana derby epicenter he went from 64 points now he's got 164 points you look at that front running wire to wire risen star win he won the risen star by almost three lengths you see zandon win the bluegrass next out smile happy second in the bluegrass next out he buried the top two finishers in the bluegrass did it geared down he did that from the lead now in the louisiana derby from from behind the lead he just you know ran away with it by a clear margin again the bottom line is that epicenter is the real deal but taken back in a 20 horse field is a heck of a lot trickier than just taken back and getting the pocket toe behind zazu or zozo for brad cox in the louisiana derby in my opinion, there's no guarantee that Epicenter will be able to work out a real sweet trip like that in the Kentucky Derby, be it from on or off the pace, but he sure has a lot of talent.